Well, everybody, uh, today's a bit of a special edition because, when was it? I think Monday. 100 subscribers. So, that's kind of cool. We hit a milestone. So, for this, I'm just going to do a tour of the layout and a tour of the collection. Because I did a poll like a month or two months ago, and some people really actually did want a collection tour, so we're going to do both. A layout tour and collection tour, but first the layout has to get powered on. Alright, so I think first I'm going to go with the collection tour. Let me bring... Actually... Yeah, you know what? We'll not... Sp we, we'll spoil it. Actually, I'm not sure how it's spoiling, but... Uh, I have some more locomotives now. Uh, the review will be happening shortly. Vote down in the comments which one you want. Alright. Collection tour. So, all of my stuff is stored in here. At least all the end scale stuff is. And if I, if you guys want me to do an HO scale tour, I'll do that. But I'll only do that if it's requested. So, we'll start out with the diesel locomotives. Uh, I have quite a few. So, I have these PAs right here. I have that BL2 right there. I mean, I guess the only reason why this isn't in, well, the re only reason why that's counted as a diesel locomotive, I mean, it's not, but it's because it's not a steam locomotive and I don't have an electric locomotive drawer, but that doesn't matter. I don't care. So we have this Lifelake Great Northern SD7. Runs fantastically. I love it. Got it. Good price. Just good. Love it. Uh, Kato SD70 ACE. Uh, eh. It runs well with other SD70 ACEs, but I originally got these to run in a pair. But the S44 starts up a lot quicker than this, and it's basically just dragging the SD70 ACE, which is not good for the motor, so I don't like to do it a lot. But I've got the ES44 AC from Kato. Love it. Nice workhorse. Probably... Might be the heaviest locomotive I have. Uh, let's see. We have this SD40-2. I also love it. Uh, great model. Uh, and this one runs really well. The S44. So then, the F units. I uh have, -huh. let's see, which one is which? Alright. This locomotive right here is a little bit special. Because it's my first actual N-scale locomotive. Now sure, everybody knows about this, the Southern Pacific high speed stuff. That has a special place of honor because that was my first end scale, like actual end scale piece of stuff. So it's, it's a bit special. So I have this one that's coming in the starter, Kato starter set. We have this one, which comes in the Kato freight set. And then these are actually my dad's. So they don't, they're not mine, but I run them, because he's, he never runs them. He just bought them for himself. And I'm, I'm the only one who has a layout down here, so, yeah. Alright, moving on to the steam locomotives. Um, not as much as the diesels, because they're more expensive. But, here we have Southern 722. It's a Bachman Spectrum. Um, it has its good days and bad days. That's all I'll say about it. When it runs, it runs great. When it doesn't run, it, uh, yeah, it doesn't run great. I have this, Model Power 260, absolutely love it. It is acting up at the moment, but I'm sure I can get that fixed. Now, Kato GS4. Probably one of my favorite steam locomotives that I own. Uh, runs great, performs really well. Just a really good purchase. Um... And then my newest purchase is this, the Model Power Northern Pacific Pacific, and that runs great. It's a little bit sensitive to dirty track, but whatever. I need to get a track cleaner car anyways. I keep saying that, but I never actually do it. All right. So now we'll move on to the rolling stock because I feel like. This wouldn't be a proper collection tour if I didn't show you all my rolling stock, because some of it is a little bit special. <coughs> I 
So we have this Inner Mountain kit. Didn't go quite well. Uh, Wheels of Time. Absolutely love it. Micro Trains. Uh, let's see, that's a Concord kit, I believe. We have this. I'm not 100% sure who manufactures it. <coughs> but it's a fictional of the... Well, it's a fictional rendition of the Oregon, California, and Eastern Railway, which is the railway at the... Colorado Model Railroad Museum in Greeley, and they actually do have um, this boxcar full size prototype outside of it. Now we have a uh, another Micro Trains boxcar. Yeah, love it. And then we have this Athern Bunker Reefer, which it's a boxcar, so that's gonna go in the boxcar tour from a Athern. That's the newest collection of my Rolling Stock. Uh, we have this Rio Grande Bachman boxcar. Absolutely love it. Uh, we have this right here, Bachman as well, and then these two, the uh, let's see, okay, these two are micro trains I think, and then this last one is Bachman. Now, moving on to the passenger cars. So I'm actually gonna have to pull up the PA's a little bit to truly show all of them. So these are all Kato passenger cars. So. This one, this one came with the El Capitan uh, expansion set because I needed a baggage car and I didn't want to buy the actual baggage car. It works well enough, therefore I buy it. Um, let's see, Regal Inn. That I bought as the stand as a standalone car from the 2020 Rock Mountain Train Show. Um, works good. We have the I think these three cars are all from the Kato starter set. And then we have the stone car, which I didn't buy the set for, because I don't want to buy the set, it's like 200 bucks. But I got it standalone off of eBay. <coughs> I guess somebody was just selling the entire set. And they all do have interior lighting. It's a little bit finicky sometimes, but it works out. Um, and the rest of the passenger cars, we have a uh, collection of Atlas and Model Power Santa Fe cars. We have the bi level car. And then the Smacker Trains New Haven car. So, yeah. And then Cabooses. Uh, this hunk of junk. Uh, we have this, which is an Atlas one. I love it. It was a bit expensive in my opinion but it was kind of a gift and then this the one that you guys see the most because it's lit and there's actually a crew figure back there but I love this caboose and I did put interior lighting in it and then this I got for free from the train shop because I won a raffle well, actually I didn't I, I didn't win the raffle and that's what got me this because if you don't win the raffle you still get a prize and then this just goes to the Kato Star Set. Moving on. I don't know if you guys knew I had these, but I kind of... Somebody else at the train shop, who may be watching this video right now, Charlie, you know who you are, uh, I stole them. Yeah. Key models on scale as well, Rio Grande, but... Well, I didn't necessarily steal them. He was just... He didn't pay in time. What is going on with the lighting? There we go. Uh, this is all, like, the grain stuff, or just miscellaneous. So it's a six car set. It does run a little bit wobbly. Still trying to figure those out. Most of it does run well. Then I have this and this along with the Santa Fe Caboose that uh, this one right there. I got this in a raffle. I also won this in a raffle. And then these came with the uh, starter set for the freight set. And then I just bought this from the train shop, and I also bought this from the train shop. A lot of this stuff does come from the train shop. And that's about it for rolling stock, actually that is it. Let's start with the layout tour. So, how this is gonna work, is I'm gonna show the stuff that I am done with, and the stuff that's gonna be continu continued to work on. Cause I think pretty much right here, it's at a place where I like it. So, I'm not gonna be messing around much with it. So, when I first got this layout, 
it was actually you can still sort of see the brown painted styrofoam but I just had this big styrofoam board and it was that same color as that mountain which I'll get on that later same color as the mountain <coughs> all pink and ugly and stuff so yeah uh, these fences right here and these ties along the rails along the tracks these are actually because I had a little broken down fence because I saw a thing on Auto Editor, I'm like, yeah, it looks like a fun project. So I did it, and now I have these. And it's kind of, because I did, I had to take that fence down when I put up the grass mat, but at least I saved it. Not all of it got saved, but most of it did. And this is just like a little reference to it, I guess. Uh, so this sign, I scratch built using toothpicks, some paint, and a photo editor. So this was at, this was built on Halloween of 2020. Uh, it's just super glued on there, it's cardstock. It's, I think I have a couple of those signs around the layout, I'm not 100% sure though. But they're, they're good, they're fun to build, and as long as you know what you're doing, they're fine. And then, this is another example of one of those cardstock things, except it's just a Colorado flag. And then the other, oh, the other flag is right over here, and that's actually a 3D, well, a 3D, like a, you know, a 3D pen? It's essentially that, and I just put it on there. So, yeah. <coughs> Moving on to Sitville Station. Um, this was the first building. No, actually, this was the first building, but we'll get on to that later. This was, I got this for my birthday, and, uh... I super detailed it with a bunch of figures, and I put because this originally had Sunnyvale or Sun yeah no Sunnyvale. Uh, I put Sudville on there, and I put some solar panels just for some interest. Cause you know, why not? A fun little afternoon project. <laughs> um, let's let's go into the forest area. So this. And actually, before I go on, I'm just gonna, like, share the backstory of this layout. <coughs> this layout is kind of set in the, uh, front range, Colorado. So, like, maybe, mm, like, Coal Creek Canyon, if you've been there, then you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, it's, uh, it's in the mountains. It's, so this is, cause there's a town called, what is it, Pine Cliff? This is sort of set on it, except in Pinecliff, the it's not a loop. It just goes through the mountain into the Moffat Tunnel. Uh, but this is sort of that area it's set in. So eventually, I'm optimistic about putting a backdrop in, but who knows? This is still a starter layout for me. But I have this little forest, and then got some campers. They've been there for a while. Then added a bunch of bushes. And a bunch of these bottle brush trees, which I actually like, but can't find them anymore. These are from, like, Target for, like, a buck. You get three of them. They're, like, the Christmas stuff. And I found they worked really well. This one doesn't need to be there because it's snowy. So I'm going to make some trees. And then this is all just more tree stuff. This, I do plan to get grass matted. This, actually, like, I'm planning for this to be, like, a little industry. So there's some operating potential here then uh, I actually got this in Seattle and I needed something to go there so I decided why not put that there so that's that's that there uh, I got this this these are all these three are lifelike kits this is a model power kit uh, they're okay oh the police fell over oops but I had this extra figure so I decided he was He's gonna be climbing the Space Needle. Um, forklift there. Oh, oh, you guys don't know about the Christmas tree. Okay, so, Christmas of 2020, I had this big tree that I got, and I didn't know what to do with it. So, uh, well, lights. And I never bothered to take them off, because I kinda 
permanently put them in there. So I decided, why not? We're going to live with it. And now, uh, yeah, but I can't turn it on too long because it's April, not December. Yeah. Uh, let's go down here. So this was originally going to be chain link fenced. I still think I might do that, but I don't know. It would be kind of awkward to end it right here. But I think I might just keep it up open. There's that, like, a no trespassing sign. This is Sutville Park. Don't know why that's there. So the backstory behind this, well, there's no real backstory, but I just had an empty space, so I filled it with a park. Uh, we have my first N-scale locomotive here. We have this nice little tree, and then we have some kids playing baseball. And then I have a scratch-built swing set. And then actually, my dog, my IRL dog, well, sort of resembles that. A golden blob. And then I'll have some, like, wheel sets here and there dotted around it. And actually, I have a P7 HO scale knuckle coupler hidden in the bushes just to look like junk. Right there, but it works. <coughs> <coughs> so this, I've been experimenting with ground from here, trying to make sure it's the right color. I'm not 100% sure. I might... Well, most of this is going to be covered up by trees anyways, so it, you're not really going to see it that much, and it'll have a bunch of bushes in it and stuff, so I'm not too concerned, but it might look a little out of place, but then again, this is a beginner layout, I don't care, and it's kind of hard to match that, that color, so yeah, going back here, we just have, the, I added this for a little bit of extra interest, and then the reason why there's a dinosaur there is because at the Rocky Mountain Model Train Museum, Rocky Mountain Model, whatever, Colorado Model Railroad Museum, they have dinosaurs hidden all around the layout. There's like, there's a lot of them. I don't remember the exact amount, but they're actually pretty well hidden, and it's really fun to go look through them, and then if you find them all, you get a prize. So I chose a dinosaur, and this is all eventually going to be pretty hidden. So moving down to the back here, we have Upper Sootville. Actually, the compass of the layout is that's north, west, south, east. So, kind of oriented the way I am right now. The mountain's that way. But, uh, here we have this. I got this double crossover, ballasted all this track. Then we have the other tunnel portal. You may see some cracks in it. This thing has been dropped more than two times so it's it's seen better days but that's why it's on this end and not that end which is the side you see the most also you know a couple memes made it into the layout yeah i like it you should like it too because if you don't like model trains you're, you're wrong everybody loves model trains so now if you guys want to name this mountain, because I'm not 100% sure on what to name it, uh, put it in the comments. Also, if you're still here, thank you. Tour will be over shortly. Uh, this is all going to get done, I'm hoping, within the year. I still need to get a couple materials, like plaster, cloth, to smooth out the train and finalize the shape. But what I'm planning is, is most of this is going to be forested, and there's going to be a little cabin right here. And then... That's why I already pre-drilled the hole, because I, I want to eventually have lights in there. Anyways, that about wraps up the layout tour. And if you're interested to know why this is called Sootville, it's because there's a cat out on my grandparents' ranch in Sterling, which is northeast, northeastern Colorado. His name is Soot, and uh, I raised him from a kitten. And I just thought, you know, model trains, Soot, steam locomotives, they produce Soot and Ash and Smoke. So why not? Because he's not entirely black either. He's just like a brownish color. Anyways, I think that's going to wrap it up for the, the tour. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you guys so much for 100 subscribers. Like, I really appreciate it. Anyways, um, yeah, there will be a new... I have confirmed that I will be doing a review on two brand new locomotives soon. So stick around for that. Expect that in probably mid-May. That's when I'm getting them. I'll give you one hint. 
That's your hint. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. It's it's been it's been fun. Hundred hundred subscribers. Let's go for five hundred. So thank you guys so much for watching, and see you next video.